Hello and welcome. Today we are doing a question from Leak Code called Binary Tree in Order Traversal. It's a medium. Let's get started. Given a binary tree, return the in order traversal of its nodes' values. Example, given the tree root 1, no left child, 2 for its right child, and then 3 and null, we output 1, 3, and then 2. And why do we do this? It's because it's an in-order traversal. So for in-order, we always want to go left, then root, and then right. So we start with node 1. There is no left, so we go root, which is 1. Then for right, we again do left, root, and then right, which is why we do 1, 3, 2. And looking at a bigger example to get a better idea, we have the tree with root 1, 2, 3 are its left and right children, then 4, 5, 6, 7 are their left and right children. We want to do an in-order traversal. And a quick little tip for how to do this, if we draw flags going straight down and take our pencil going left to right without lifting it, try to connect all of them, we go 4, 2, 5, 1, 6, 3, 7. And this also holds for pre-order and post-order. For pre-order, we just change the flags to the left and post, we change them to the right. Um, but that's just like a cool little way to figure out the order. So for pre-order, sorry, for in order, we want to go left, root, then right. So we start here, we want to go left. For this tree over here, we again want to go left. So for root, which is two, and then right is five. So this takes care of the left for the one. Now we want to do right, which is, sorry, we want to do root, which is one, and then right, which is this subtree right here. And again, on the tree with node three, we want to do left, root, and right. So six, three, and seven. So this is what we would expect for our result given this tree. And my video is kind of blocking this, but it said that the recursive solution was trivial and can we do it iteratively? But let's just go ahead and do both. So for the recursive solution, there are two things we want to make sure of. We want to keep track of our base case and the recursive case. For our base case, we just want to see when will we return? When will we exit the function? What's our endpoint? Um, over here, it's pretty easy. If there is no root, that is when we return. And what's our output? It's a list of values. So we would return like the empty list at that point. So if root is none, return the empty list. Otherwise, we perform our recursive case. Now we saw up above, we always want to go left and then left, then root, and then right. So what do we want to do here is we want to return something that calls this function again. Well, we want to perform something on the left. So the first thing we're going to do is call in order order reversal on root oh. so on root dot left. And then whenever we're done with left, how do we want to put our entire logic together? Well, we want a list. So we want to add the value of our root to this list. So root.val. And then the same thing on the right. So plus sulf dot in order traversal on root dot right. So what is this doing? Taking a look at this example, we start with root, uh, root equals node 1. We go into this function. Root is not none. So now we want to return the in-order traversal of root.left. And then once that is done, we add the value for 1 and then perform the same thing on root.right. So for 1, we would have something we perform on its left child, which is 2. Whatever that value is, we add that to the value of 1. And then we do the same thing on the right side, 3. So because we always read left to right, before we can even do the 1 and the 3, we have to solve for the left because we return what's on left right away. So we call this again with 2 being our root. Root is not none. 
Now we do again on two's left, two's value, and then two's right. So at node two, we would do four plus the value at two, and then five. And the same thing again, before we can even get to two and five, we have called root.left. So we call this again with the root being four. Root is not none. And now we have to do the same thing with root.left, value and right. So at four, we call it with none. Then we add the value for four, and then we call it again with none. So for root.left being none, we call this again. Root is none. So over here, for none being the root, all we do is return the empty list. So over here, we can plug back in the empty list for the root.left when the four was the root. Add to that our value of four. And then again, for its right, we do the same thing, but we know that's also the empty list. We can replace that. And now for root being four, we just concatenate the empty list, four, and the empty list to get a list of just four. So this is what we get at root four. We can take this and replace it for root.left when we call two. So we take this for whatever we got and replace it when we called four. So we have the list of four, concatenate that with the value of two, because right now our root is two. We go back up a level. So we have root.left being just the list of four root.value for two, we add that on. So concatenating this is four comma two. And now we do the same thing for root.right. And we know it's a left and right children hour are none. So it's just a list of five that we'd be adding on. Adding all of that together, we get four to five for node two. We take this, replace it for two. And now we've jumped back up to the root being one. Now root.left for one, we get the answer four two five. Add in root.value, which is just one, concatenate that, and do the same thing for its right. So now we can solve four three. And again, four three, we do the same thing. We go what we have for six, then what we would get for three, and then what we would get for seven. So again, over here, it's the same thing. We would return just the list six, add this on with the value at the root. And then again, seven would just be a list of seven since it has no left or right children. Adding all of these together, we get six, three, seven. And that's what we can substitute in now for three, four, two, five, one, plus six, three, seven. Concatenate those. And we get exactly what we were expecting. Let's run this code. I'm gonna delete this. Run code. Accepted, let's submit. And it is accepted as well. Now that we've solved it recursively, how do we do this iteratively? It's the same idea. We still want to go left, root, and right. But the only thing is now we can't call our function again. So if we can't do this, how will we build up our list? We don't know where we want to return to again, because when we were doing it recursively, we knew we could return back to two, back to one, and then go down to 37. But now that we can't do that, we're going to have to keep a data structure to store all the nodes. And that is where the use of a stack comes in. So stack is last in, first out. So what this means is that as we append nodes to our stack, the last one we append is what we're going to perform our calculation on. So I'm going to initialize stack to empty. And since we can't build the list as we did when we performed it recursively, we're going to have to have a list that's going to store our result. And now we want to do the same thing. We want to go all the way down to the left before we go back to root and right. So how do we do this? Well, starting from the root node, 
if we think about this, we want to go left. So if we see that there is a left child that exists, let's just add this on to our stack. And for this, the left child exists, we add the 4 onto our stack. Once it doesn't exist, then we want to take this value and add it to result. And then go back. Now we know that 2 was the last thing added on our stack once we remove this 4. Add this value and then see if it has a right. And do the same thing that way. So, for example, I'm just going to go ahead and type this up and run through it again. So, while root is not none. This is kind of our base case. Or stack is not empty. So not equal to empty. We will continue going through our tree. While root is not none, let's add the root to the stack. Stack.append root. And since we want to keep going left, let's make root equal to root dot left. So what's happening here? We have stack equaling empty and result equaling empty. We start with root being one, so it's not none, and stack is empty right now, but it's okay since root was not none. While root is not none, we enter this while loop. We append the root to the stack, so right now we append one. And now root equals root dot left, so it equals two. Again, we go in this while loop. Root is not none because it equals two. We add that to our stack, and now root equals four. Four is not none. We add this to stack, and now it equals root dot left, which is none. So once it is none, we want to exit this while loop and pop off what is in stack. So what I'm going to do is have root equal to stack dot pop. And what pop does, it removes the very last um, element of a list, saves it into what you're assigning it. And that means that now stack will equal 1, 2 because 4 has been popped off and 4 is kind of saved in root. So now I want to add the value of this element we popped off to result. So result dot append root dot bell so it's four and now i want to see what the right is so we just did left we did root and now we want to go right because it's always left root right four in order so root equals root dot right so we popped off four added four to the result and now we have root equaling root dot right so now it equals none because there is no right child for four. We exit this loop and come back again for this check. Root is none, but stack is not empty, so we're okay, we go back in here. Root is none, so we can't go into this while loop. Now we pop off whatever is in stack, so it, that is two now, and this is how we kind of go back up levels through this use of stack. So we pop off two, erase this from here, add the value to result, and now root equals root dot right. So now we go into five. Again, root is not none, it's equal to five. While root is not none, we add the root to the stack. Root equals root dot left, which is none. So now we come here, pop off the five, add the value to result. And now root equals none because there is no right child for five. So coming back up in here, root is none, but stack is not empty. We skip this while loop since root is none. We pop off what we had. So now we have gone back up to the top, right? Erase what's in one, add the value to result. Root equals root dot right. So root now equals three. Now we are on the right side of the tree. So even though stack is empty, root is not none, it's equal to three. While root is not none, append that to the stack. And now root equals root dot left, which is six. We go back into this while loop. It is not none. We add six to the stack and root equals root dot left, which is none. Since six has no left child, pop off what is in stack, add the value to result. Root equals root dot right, which is none. So we go back into here. Stack is not empty. Come in here. 
pop off what is in stack three, pop that off, add the value to result, and root equals root dot right. What is the right of three, seven? Go back in here, stack is empty, but root is equal to seven. Come in here, add that back to stack. Now, root dot left is none. Come here, pop off the seven, add the result onto our list. It's equal to right now. So root is none, stack is empty. We exit the while loop and we have formed our list that we were expecting. Once this is done, all we have to do is return result. Return result. And let's run the code. It is accepted, let's submit. And it is accepted as well. So this is the iterative version of how to solve this. It's the same concept that we use for recursion. We want to figure out what the pattern is. For in order, it's always left, root, right. So remembering that and applying it either through recursion, through the recursive case, or through stack, based on how we add and pop from the stack, the order of how we do it, as long as we keep that pattern, we're good. So going through this runtime and space time, since we go through all the nodes, runtime is O of N, and space, we keep a list of all of our elements, so that is also O of N. So this is a O of N runtime, O of N space time solution. And we did this both recursively and iteratively because in general, with binary search trees and problems like those, it's one or the other. So it's important that we understand both approaches and how to do it. If you have any questions at all, let me know down below. And as always, I'll see you next time.